Roger A. Bounds River and the Campbell, okay, and I decided to put this thing on and uh, uh, and slung it through one of the runs that he talks about in his uh, in his books, okay, and I'm actually looking at that uh, fly. It's hanging up on my wall right now, the first fish I ever caught on a black GP, and it was out of uh, Hague Browns River, so. That was Art Lindgren sharing a little connection with Roderick Haig Brown. Let's keep this terrain rolling. This is the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. We'll help you on your fly fishing journey with classic stories covering steelhead fishing, fly tying, and much more. Hey, how's it going today? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. I've got a great resources page if you want to check out some of the information uh, and books that our guests have noted in this podcast. You can head over to wetflyswing.com slash resources to check out all of the books, including, um, I'll, I'll throw one of Art's books, uh, probably, I don't know, if you think about one, send a, uh, send a DM to me on social and I'll, and I'll highlight that book. We have Art Lindgren here today to share the history of BC fly fishing with a focus on steelhead. Art connects us to some of the greatest uh, today, including Roderick Haig Brown, Harry Lemire, and Sid Glasso. Before we get started, let's hear from our sponsors. Turtle Box is a new company I've been working with this year. They build an amazing portable speaker that is louder and more rugged than anything I've ever encountered. Unlike most other portable speakers out there, the Turtle Box was specifically built with the sportsman in mind. The quality of this speaker is truly unreal. I've talked with the guys at Turtle Box, solid dudes by the way. They love the outdoors and are all avid sportsmen. We all love to get outside and enjoy the peaceful nature of the river and woods, but who doesn't like some great music before or after an adventure? This is a product I can truly say does not disappoint. Go ahead and check the guys out at turtleboxaudio.com. This one is going to be huge. So without further ado, here is Art Lindgren. How's it going, Art? Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Good morning. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on here. We've uh, I've got a little uh, uh, this master list going of people that I really want to connect with over. You know, I'm planning on, and I've connected with a lot of them. But you're one name that I haven't until now, and I've had a lot of uh, guests and listeners and people that recommend I connect with you. So, yeah, we're here to talk about. You've got a bunch of books. So you've got a number of books out there to talk about British Columbia and and flies and all sorts of things. Uh, we're going to dig in all that, but first, just talk about how you first got into fly fishing. Oh, well, I, I guess probably in the, the 1960s, uh, when my wife and I were first married, uh, uh, my neighbor across the across the hall in the apartment, uh, he fly fished, so he wanted, uh, uh, was looking for a fishing partner, so uh, anyway, he tried, he tried to teach me to uh, fly cast, uh, uh, what didn't go too well, so I took a night school course, uh, from a guy called Earl Anderson. That was what the only type of uh, a way you could learn either through a friend or that night school course through Earl, okay? He did fly casting and fly tying. I took his fly casting course and then I bought uh, a fly rod and that would have been in, uh, I don't know, 1965, something like that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I gear fished for a number of years. Uh, and then in 1979, I decided I wanted to fly fish for steelhead. And uh, I, I put down the, the gear rod and uh, spent uh, that fall fishing the Thompson River and uh, managed to catch my first uh, steelhead on the fly there. Uh, and then I took a week holiday and I managed to get into about a well, a half a dozen more on that holiday so it can it it got me going steelhead fly fishing and from 79 i've never done anything else so uh and uh yeah so. that's it that's it so you've so since 79 and i want to dig into that first steelhead too that that moment you know if you remember it at, uh but so have you been so has it been mostly steelhead and you haven't um i mean that's been your focus have you dug into other types of fishing or you know lakes and all that stuff as well yeah, yeah, no. Again, British Columbia, we got a. It, it's the, the still water fisheries that are, are 
are really well well known and there's a lot more people doing that type of fly fishing and you know i do that too okay uh uh, you, you know, steel. I guess you could catch steelhead uh, twelve months of the year here. If, uh, uh, but you know, by winter time now, I don't do very much fishing. I'm getting too old for that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. But, me too. Me, but me too. Uh, you know, I like to. Uh, I've I've caught most game fish, and I think there's probably twenty twenty varieties of fish that you can fly fish for in in in, in the province here and I've probably caught most of them. What the only thing I don't think I've caught are bass and uh and pike. So Yeah, yeah. Are are you planning any uh are you planning on getting the, the pike uh checked off of your list uh, before you know before too long? Yeah, I, I don't know. Again you gotta go up into the northern part of the province to do that, okay? Uh and uh uh, yeah, I yeah. do go up there, but it's more, it's more for, uh, or, you know, Hague Brown wrote about, uh, a fish he called the poison blue. Okay. And that was, uh, uh, he was referring to the grayling and, uh, you know, about oh, eight years ago, I decided I wanted to catch one of those. So anyway, I started going up into the, the North part of the province, close to the Yukon border, not far from Alaska. Okay. And, uh, I've been fishing for grayling up there ever, just about every summer since. So, uh, uh, so that's another fish that I knocked off the, off the list that I wanted to do. So, uh, there you go. but, uh, yeah, yeah, but grayling and trout and lakes and, uh, bull trout in rivers and steelhead and all the five species of salmon uh so yep yeah good and a lot of a lot of variety here okay that you can fish for with a fly so that's it yeah a lot of variety and a lot of a lot of big fish there's uh well i wanted to i want to talk um you know you mentioned haig brown um you know, obviously a big name out there. I, I wanted to maybe touch on that a little bit, but um, but take us back to that steelhead, uh, the Thompson River. Do you remember that first steelhead you got and what you were using and stuff like that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's one of those memories that'll last a uh, lifetime. Okay. Cause I know I'd, I'd fish for a couple of weekends at least. Okay. Maybe even three weekends up there. Uh, and I, you know, I hadn't done anything and we were getting ready to come home and, uh, we drove past the graveyard run, and it was empty, okay? So uh, I said, well, maybe I'll go down there and try it. It was Sunday afternoon, okay? Got to go home pretty soon. But uh, anyway, I walked over to the lower part of the graveyard run, and uh, I th- threw my line out there, and something grabbed it, okay? I didn't, it, it missed. It missed, okay? It didn't, and I didn't see any boil or anything like that. But again, I was using a floating line, and a Doc Spratly steelhead pattern okay and uh and anyway the next cast it uh well same place i went out there and the fish grabbed it and uh you know it was a 34 inch female fish that uh i don't know how long it took me to land but you know it was on a on a seven weight uh <laughs> a fly rod or a fiberglass not fiberglass yeah no yeah. graphite, I oh, think graphite? So was yeah 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 so anyway that was the first one and uh uh yeah that's right, yeah, the, and, and the Fenwick that was back in the late seventies and eighties, right? The Fenwick was was the the probably one of the go to rods. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a seven weight was a little light for Thompson River. Cause, you know, the average fish is that was probably about an average size fish. But uh, you know, a seven weight line is a seven weight rod was again on the light side. So, but again, it was the only one I fly rod I, I had that. Uh, I felt good enough to fish steelhead with, uh, yeah. you know, I've been worn out since, uh, since that, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, there's, you know, obviously a ton we could talk about here, uh, dig into your books and things. I think, you know, I'd be interested to hear the, the history is a piece on this podcast. I love to cover because I'm trying to connect, you know, people like yourself to the, to the back into the history. Could, could we dig into a little bit of that on British Columbia maybe? And, and Hague Brown too. I know his name will come up along the way. Could we take it back to wherever you want to start? Maybe, maybe go back to the beginning of British Columbia and talk about fly fishing and then kind of bring it in to where we are. British Columbia was a colony of, of, uh, of Great Britain, uh, and as was Vancouver Island, they were two separate colonies, and they became uh, one in, in uh, oh, 19, in the 60s, I okay. think. Oh, wow. 18, 1860s. This oh, oh, yeah, 18, 1860s. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, when uh, the British government uh, wanted the 
Canadian border, uh, uh, U.S. Canada, U.S. border uh, surveyed. Uh, there was a guy called John Keast Lord who came, and uh, he was the naturalist, uh, uh, and uh, uh, that that was associated with the Boundary Commission. But, now, anyway, the first he, he wrote uh, a book called *The Naturalist in British Columbia*, and that's where the first some of the first fly fishing stuff is. Okay, a lot of these colonial administrators were were you know the. Uh, yeah. Well educated people out of Britain, okay, that uh, went to the colonies and they, a lot of them fly fish. So they brought this fly fishing uh, with them, okay. Hmm. So the, the first fly ever de ever developed was in the uh, Keith uh, Lord's book, okay, and I it's called the red shirted trapper, and that's in my in my fly patterns in nineteen uh, fly patterns of British Columbia book that I wrote in nineteen ninety six. I think I wrote mm -hmm. that one. Uh, but uh, so that that's the roots were are British. Yeah, uh, again, British Columbia, British. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, we had a long history of, of of people coming from Britain, okay, uh, and uh, fly fishers uh, that you know had, I guess, I put put the tr tr tradition there of fly fishing for some uh, for some species of fish, okay, more more. More of the trouts uh, again. Uh, steelhead uh, fishing was kind of late coming uh, for a lot of people in the, uh, probably the '60s and '70s, where it became popular uh, with the formation of some fly fishing clubs and stuff like that. So, yeah, that was 19, 1960s is when steelhead became popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But fly fishing more, more so again. But I think it was more through because there was a few people who wanted to uh, have. Uh, of fly fishing clubs, okay, and uh, you know, summer run fishing, summer run steelhead fishing is a lot easier, a lot easier to catch summer runs than it is winter runs on the fly because you know winter runs you have to get down deep for them they aren't that responsive. But uh, you know, summer run fish are, are pretty active, okay, and they'll come up, and take your fly off the surface and stuff like that. So, and on on the steelhead in part, it was probably general money. Uh, uh, he fished with uh, Hague Brown fished with him in, back in the 30s. Okay, when he was writing the Western Angler, uh, and he, he he wanted to have more of a variety. You know, he, Campbell, Hague Brown was on the Campbell River, and he fished the Campbell in in around that area. But uh, the, the Campbell didn't have a lot of summer runs, but the Stamp River over on the west coast was a real good summer run stream. And uh, so anyway, uh, Hague Brown fished with General Money and. Uh, it was General Money that convinced Dave Brown to try winter steelhead fly fishing. Okay, uh, and that's uh, detailed in his 1947 edition of uh, the Western Angler. So, and of course, Tommy Brayshaw was another pioneer steelhead fly fisherman that uh, fished the the Coquihalla River uh, near near Hope. Okay, and, uh, he had a bunch of Coquihalla series flies that he, he developed for the, for that what that river's fish. So um, again, the trout fishing in, in the lakes. Uh, uh, there's a number of people, but Bill Nation is is one that fished her up around the Kamloops Lakes area, and he developed a lot of lot of fly patterns for for British Columbia lake fishing. Uh, um, yeah, Arthur Brian Williams, another British guy that came over. He was probably the first game game. Uh, warden in, in 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 the province, he wrote uh, a, a number of books. Uh, Rod and Creel in British Columbia, that was 1919, and Fishing Game in British Columbia, 1935, and there was one other one I can't remember the name of it of, of it now. But you know, these are all the the, the roots, okay, that were established. Hank Brown, uh, you know, uh, uh, Brian Williams, and all uh, John Keast Lord, and uh, so there's. A number of other ones that yeah. uh, I can't quite remember them all. Yeah, yeah, if somebody wanted to dig into that history, is do you have a book that somebody could take a look and, and kind of get the whole background on the history there? Uh, well, Fly Patterns of British Columbia, uh, which I did in 1996, and we reprinted it with the Maddo in uh, in 2008, and I, that that the 2008 printing was to kind of rec recognize the hundred hundred year. Uh, 
anniversary of the birth of Roger K. Brown. Okay, so uh, it's the same book, but with a, a section on 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 Hank Brown in the beginning of it. Uh, uh, with on on that book, it, uh, it the history is de- detailed through the the flies that were developed over from the 1860s up until about 1980s. Okay, for oh uh, for the, the interior trout fishing, the coastal trout, the, the cutthroat trout, uh, salmon, and and steelhead. So there's four sections that the book is divided into, uh, and they have all the early patterns and you know uh, uh, and and more modern ones uh, up until the, the to the eighties. Uh, and there's another one uh, book that I did called uh, "Famous British Columbia Fly Fishing Waters," I and mean, it's those those rivers. And, and lakes that uh, uh, were important in the history of the sport. Okay, some of them are not very good anymore because you know they've destroyed them with dams yeah. and stuff. But other ones are are there, like you know the Skeena country has got a good, good, uh, some good, uh, a lot of lot of rivers that they're still fine fishing rivers. Uh, this uh, you know a river that's never been altered by dams or you know, by man. So. Uh, Anyway, that that's another good book that has a lot of a lot of British Columbia fly fishing history in it. Gotcha. So yeah, you can look at just the through the fly history. You can see you can follow and track the history of kind of how yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, again, I hate Brown. I was so enthusiastic about him. So my first book I ever did was Fly Patterns of Roderick Cade Brown. So that's got you know twenty twenty of his flies that he developed for. Uh, that that are in in his books, okay. But uh, so that was that was a good little project to uh, uh, provides history on him. Uh, okay, so so yeah, so that's a little snippet on the history there, which is great. Um, you know, there's a couple of things I wanted to dig into here. You mentioned the tops, and there's some rivers. You know, some rivers have had some issues. Some rivers seem to be doing better. Um, but Hague Brown, you know, on on him, I, I didn't want to go too deep because I know you wrote about him. But is he, you know, maybe connect um, the steelhead when steelhead started to the people that were there that got it going up in, in B.C.? Who, who were those people? Well, again, General Money and uh, Roger Hague Brown and Tommy Brayshaw were the three by three pioneer steelhead fishermen, and I guess I just did a book on on those three to to detail okay their contributions to the to the sport, and I just did that this past year while uh, oh wow the the, the COVID nineteen there you uh, go you know okay again because we were restricted and it, it not be able to do a lot of things so I I actually had three books this 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 year that uh, and one of them was uh, on 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 money and Hig Brown and and Brayshaw. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, they're they're all sold now. Okay, I don't have any left. You actually published a book that that that's out there now for this year. Yeah, yeah, but again, I've 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 sold them all. Okay, there's no there's none left. <laughs> so nobody can so nobody can buy them. You're not going to reprint it or anything. No, no, no I'm not. Okay, uh, it's. Uh, it wasn't a big publication, uh, oh, gotcha. and you know one, one of these things I, I, I've been doing. Okay, uh, I, I I I like fine books myself, so I have a a, a, a woman that, that makes limited editions for me. So when I do a, uh, one of these things, like there was there, there was thirty thirty three that were quarter leather bound, okay, with a fly uh, mounted in the in the cover, tied by me, and for the, this this. Steelhead yep. influence. The book was either had to be a general money pattern, a Roger Cake Brown pattern, or a Tommy Brayshaw pattern. So, but I I, I get a, a fine edition book out of it, and then I do some soft covers, okay, for people that want to just have the the, the soft cover book. Yeah. But once they're, once they're done, uh, you know, I did a book on Harry Lemire, okay, uh, oh, probably two years ago, three years ago, probably. Uh, and you know we maybe printed 600 copies of it, uh, but again, you know I I had some of Harry's r- r- flies, and I did uh, well maybe 25 limited editions of uh, of you know a fly of Harry and again a quarter leather bound book okay, for people that were collectors. Okay, gotcha. What were the name of the books you you uh, you put together this last year? Uh, Bob Clay. Uh, you know, Bob is a bamboo rod builder up on the Kispiox River, yep. and uh, 
he uh, he's a great steelhead fly fisherman. Uh, you know, he guided there. Uh, so uh, you know, it uh, it was a, a big a again book on on Bob and his his fishing and his bamboo rod building. Uh, and then Steelhead Influences of the Monty Haig Brown Brayshaw book. And the one I'm just finished is, uh, is called uh, Sid, Sid Glasso, Master uh, and Innovative uh, Fly Fisher. Yep. Glasso was a, a, um, a teacher that lived uh, on the Olympic Peninsula, and he developed a lot of well-tied, beautiful flies, okay, for fishing steelhead uh, on the Olympic Peninsula rivers. And... Uh, um, so I've actually, the, that book is at the printers right now and I'm expect them, uh, here on, uh, to, on this, this Friday, uh, by my, the, the print job. So, gotcha. uh, but, uh, you know, he had a, 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 a big influence on, on a lot of tires, especially in the past 30 years, but, uh, two of the guys in my fly fishing club. I'm, I'm in the totem fly fishers of British Columbia. They um, they knew Glasso back in the 70s, and uh, one of them uh, who I fished with for oh close to 25 years, he uh, he was intrigued with how Glasso tied flies. So anyway, he got a bunch of, of flies from, from Sid, but he also went down to Sid's place and watched him tie flies hmm. so uh, so he could copy that technique. And and uh, so the, this book has got some of that guy's flies in it, plus a number of, of Glasso's flies, because uh, he, he, Glasso was very generous, okay, uh, with uh, giving flies to people that were interested. Uh, he didn't sell them as far as I know. No. But, uh, so anyway, my my chum that I fished with for 25 years, he had this set of flies that he had in a frame, but he had them mounted with magnets, so I could take them off, okay? And, and uh, so over that 20-something year period, I, I photographed them with, at least three times, okay, with different backgrounds and stuff like that. So that's the basis for the the Glasso book is these fly collections that uh, these two totem fly fishers had. And then there's uh, fellows that were influenced by uh, by Glasso, and they're in that Pacific Northwest uh, Atlantic Salmon Fly Guild, okay, yep. Gary Anderson and uh, Daryl Thompson and Sean Delk, Delquist, or uh, all from Washington State, so they they uh, were very generous when I wanted a few flies. Uh, they, they contributed flies to the book, so they've uh, it, with what they gave me and what I had from Glass. So there's about fifty flies that are are, are featured in the okay, book. Okay, in that book, yeah. And I actually had um, oh uh, a while back. Dave McNeese was on. He I think he's writing a book on Sid as well, and he yeah, talked. He is, yeah, yeah. He's he's going to do the the big one okay uh, uh oh cool yeah, so cool cool yeah, so you know yeah. that that whole yeah and obviously we're we're not far away the the north the uh yeah washington oregon to you know it's it's uh, separated by its two countries but it's almost the the steelheaders overlap right they fish each other's oh water. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah well again my people from washington especially and you know that connection is is really strong between bc and washington yeah There's, you, know, you know people that go down there to fish and uh yeah, but you know, a lot of people come up here to to fish for you know the steelhead, yeah. but also for the for the trout fishing that's available in the lakes and the stuff camels, like that. So, the camels, yeah, we, but, uh, yeah. 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 So yeah, what I call this 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 Sid Glasso book it's uh, Sid Glasso, an influential, innovative master fly tire, and his Canadian connections because you know like the fly fly connection Glasso is is uh, from my, my 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 friends okay that were friends with Glasso so uh, yeah anyway, it's it's turned out uh, quite well, quite well I'm, I'm very pleased with with this book okay. Uh, so uh, yeah and is that book now so that's one of the three books that you actually wrote and published uh and you're publishing this year is that correct yep yep yeah why uh, on those books i wanted to touch um well i want to touch a little more on those books uh, but you just kind of you know when you're talking about the washington uh bc uh, overlap i mean i know a lot of people come up to fish the north you know rivers up in bc do you have you gotten down to like washington or oregon or any of the kind of the the northwest and fish for steelhead 
Yeah, yeah. I first, uh, I first was Frank uh, on that old. Okay, uh, you know, Frank. Uh, oh, Frank. I, I did nine books. Uh, no, oh. I'm at all. Oh, oh, okay. Publication. Yeah. Oh, no, oh I, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I did nine books with Frank. Okay. So. Oh yeah, my, yeah. Your motto. Yeah, yeah the motto. Right. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, I did. Uh, you know, so, uh, I did the three River Journals with him, but you know, Flight Patterns of Roger King Brown and Flight Patterns of British Columbia. So they're they're all done by Frank. Okay. Oh, yeah. So. But he's not doing books now, so uh, you no. know, I've uh, had these ideas that uh, I wanted to do. So I've started, uh, and one of the things too that uh, in for Pacific Northwest, uh, you know, Western Washington University down in Bellingham, I've, I've had an oral history program where they've been uh, yep. having interview people okay to, so that 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 fly fishing history is recorded in 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 those interviews and transcripts so uh, uh that's the when i wanted to do that harry lemire book that's the basics for uh for uh for it okay was was the the interview that they did on harry yeah uh, and um and again, Bill McMillan too. I, you know, I did a bit book on Bill there uh, two years ago. I guess uh, same thing. Okay, with uh, uh, the the oral history program. Uh, but uh, Bill was alive, so I could talk to him on stuff that I wanted to put in the book where Harry had already passed away. So uh, yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, so that's cool. That oral history yeah. um, thing. I wanted to touch on that because I think I know what you're talking about. I, I think I've seen. Um, a lot of the people you're talking about I've had on this podcast, we're, we're approaching 200 episodes. So I think, um, you know, you're a person that uh, fits well with, we've got a bunch of episodes on steelhead uh, fishing as well. But um, so that oral history, so who now, is that something that you're, you, there's actually an interview that you've done or is there more content? I'm thinking if somebody wanted to dig into that, could they go down to Western Washington and find that? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. No, they, they, uh, the, yeah, they they have uh, those those interviews uh, available through uh, their website now. You know, I can't remember just exactly how how to get into it. I'll put a link in the show notes to make sure we can and you know connect to that. I, I just want to make sure some of the stuff we don't touch on today, which we probably won't cover at all, that we can kind of yeah. follow up. And Frank Moore, you mentioned I I interviewed him a while back, and we talked about a lot of the the background and the shoots and yeah. back to the river. So, um, down here, do you, have you fished a bunch of rivers or just a couple of rivers kind of in the, no, the no, I, 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 I fished a, um, uh, I think three in Oregon uh-huh. and, uh, that's the, the shoots and the John day. And I can't remember. It's one of the coastal rivers oh, that yeah. I fished with. Frank. And oh, cool. Then I, I, I haven't fished a lot of Washington, uh, you know, a few down in, uh, I'm has got, uh, uh, a place down in, in uh, near the uh, yeah the coast, lots of Columbia. Okay, yeah, and I fished some rivers down there with with with, with, for, with him. Uh, oh, okay, over, over the years, uh, and but most of most of my steelhead fishing has been in BC. I mean, fifty six rivers. Okay, oh, uh, <laughs> wow for steelhead fishing, uh, and that's one of the things I'm trying to get to sixty before I. I uh, I pack it in, so I've got a, a few things lined up this year to try and get me up there to, to to that 60, 60 rivers. Uh, there you go. Uh, there you go. Yeah, so, so that's there's not a, many people who can say something like that that they they fished that many rivers. Okay, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, that's a lot. I'm trying to think. I probably yeah, I don't think I'm 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 there yet. Um, you yeah. mentioned the Deschutes. Uh, we we talk occasionally about the Deschutes. We've had some really good episodes on it, but. Um, so if you think of the Deschutes from what you remember, what would be a, is there a comparable river up in BC that is similar to the Deschutes? Oh, dear. Probably, uh, maybe the, the, the Dean is. Oh, the Dean, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I think, you know, again, the summer run, the summer run fishery. Uh, yeah. And it's about the same. Uh, maybe the Deschutes is a little bit bigger than the Dean. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsors. TurtleBox is the loudest, truly portable, waterproof Bluetooth speaker available. Perfect for a skiff, drift boat, or your craft of choice. The guys at TurtleBox believe in respecting the peace and beauty while on the water, but listening to great tunes before or after can be amazing. 
I remember our last big river trip this summer, and it was cool to break out the Bluetooth speaker as we listened to some classic music and tried to play along with our guitars. Without a Bluetooth speaker, we would have missed a bunch of amazing opportunities and some good laughs. The features I love most on this one are the quality bulletproof frame, easy to push and lighted buttons, and uh, at home you can add another speaker for uh, stereo. To be honest, I've been using uh, this speaker quite a bit around the home and the dance party with the kids has been great. Find out why TurtleBox is our go-to speaker and why it is great for the river as well. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash TurtleBox to support a great company, this podcast, and some tunes. And uh, and let's keep uh, let's keep this podcast going strong and support a great company. Again, head over to wetflyswing.com slash TurtleBox to get started right now. Okay, back to the show. So in those books, I'm curious because, you know, people are listening to this and they're thinking, man, you, you wrote a book about uh, Bob, uh, Bob Clay. You're talking about Sid, all these people. I know um, it sounds like you did them quick, but, you know, why not produce those like uh, mass, you know, so everybody can read them? Why do the short little uh, things? Where, because I know there's lots of people that probably be paying. Yeah. One of the problems with it but now, you know, again, like Frank Amato did a lot of books, but he's not doing them anymore. So obviously Frank was your man, and and when we when I had Frank on, we talked about a ton of stuff. We 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 talked about a little bit about the Deschutes and just his love of you know obviously fishing and um, yeah. And we were actually the Fly Fishing and Tying Journal was a sponsor for this podcast uh, last year, so we're, we're kind of connected to those guys. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And in fact, here here's a here's a story I talk. I'll just mention it to you briefly. Just I was on the Deschutes. We uh, we dumped a boat in the Deschutes a long time ago. Um, and Frank came up in his little jet sled and picked us up and saved us from the river. But so I, I've got a little bit of a connection to Frank, but, um, so yeah, I mean, you got this publisher, he's gone. So, I mean, I would imagine there's a, bu- there's great publishers that would love to pick up. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there because I'm, I would love to read the stuff that it sounds like, you know, that you've written. I mean, do you think there's any potential that if we found a, a good publisher, you could get that or do you want to keep it kind of low key? Uh, no, no, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm 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 not against doing something like that. Uh, you know, the books are done; uh, they're all formatted. It's uh, yeah. I mean, I just want to throw that out there because we have, you know, this podcast. We have a lot of people that listen, and I, you know, reached out to people on Facebook. You mentioned Facebook. Uh, one person, uh, Bruce Cruck, who I interviewed um, a while back. He's a oh, yeah. yeah, you know, Bruce. Well, he mentioned yeah. I asked him. Yeah. You know. I, I kind of put a shout out on Facebook. I said, "Hey, I've got art coming on," and he said, "You know, make sure to talk. Ask him about the good times of of the tea, of the tea." And I'm, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But so that's good to know. I just want to make sure because I know for me, I would love to read that book. So maybe if we find somebody that can help with, uh, or you know, connect you with a, a, a new publisher, we might have. So I'm going to throw out that throw that out to everybody. So if they anybody has idea, they can reach back out to me or connect with you on it. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. Talking about the tea, okay, one of my books was the Thompson River Journal, so, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, a, good, a lot of good memories, okay, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on, on, on that river, and uh, I did three river journals for the man, okay, the Kiss Biox, the Dean, and the Thompson, so. Yeah, the Kiss, yeah, the Kiss yeah. Biox, the Dean, and the Thompson, and why... Why those three rivers? Because there's um, well, the Kispiox, yeah. Uh, those, those are the big three, okay, uh, uh, that uh, that I think for steelheaders, okay, if you wanted to fish British Columbia, those you know, the, the, those would be the three that you would, you know, the, the icon fish, I guess, probably. Is, uh, you yeah. know, uh, but again, the Thompson, you can't fish it anymore because, again, it's closed. There's not enough fish there, and the, the Dean's difficult to get to, but uh, the Kispiox is still a good river, and uh, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, yeah. The Kispiox is one that I have a little of experience with. I fished it um, I guess one time and I fish a lot of the other, um, <laughs> the, the rivers up on the Skeeta, but, um, yeah, I mean, the Skeena has a, a number of different ones. You pick the Kispiox. I think it's, it's pretty unique. And uh, in fact, we got skunked that day on the Kispiox, but why, why not the Babine or the, uh, the Bulkley? Why, you know, you pick uh, yeah. Well, again, if, uh, it, it was back in the, in the fifties when the, the highway system was good enough, okay, that people could start traveling up in there. And it was the Kispiox that uh, that uh, a lot of them went to. And, of course, the, that 
record fish that was 36 oh, and a half pounds yeah. okay came out of the kispe ox uh, and then mauser's 33 pound uh, fly caught fish was the the largest uh, you know record f- yeah. steelhead for years so uh, that's with the the history of that uh, of the uh, of, of the started i guess probably for steelhead uh, fly fishing up in that area there uh, you know the the, the bulkley and the, the maurice were good good fisheries too but they're you know a lot smaller fish so uh, yeah it's uh, yeah so that's the, that's it do you know the, why do you know why the kispiox has um larger fish is it just in general or are there more people fit i mean why, why are there the big ones coming out because i remember i think a huge fish was caught when we were up there as well yeah uh, yeah, well, it's it's the, uh, the the amount of time they spend in, uh, in 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 the saltwater feeding. Okay, is is one one of the reasons that uh, they're they're. I think they get at least one one winter more uh, out there. Okay, oh, okay. so they just have a higher. Um, you know, more food. Okay, to get them and they grow bigger. So yeah. Uh, again, the whole that stuff is in my Kiss Me Ox River Journal. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, good. I'll, I'll, I'll put a, I'll put a link, I'll, I'll put a link out to those, uh, all your books. I'm going to put a link out, um, to all your books so people could, and is there one place, like if somebody wanted, I guess they could go to Frank Amato and grab stuff, but, um, you know, do you have, um, you know, you're on Facebook, but is that the best place if somebody wanted to look at all your books at one place, just go to Amato? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I, I again, I'm not even sure whether or not Frank's selling any books now. Okay. Uh, oh, right, right. Yeah, because again, he's. Uh, but he might have. Well, be I, I, you know, again, I, 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 I don't know. I haven't talked to him for, uh, for a while now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm getting right. Well, I'm going to stand to one of these glass of books when I get up printing uh, this week. So. Uh, Send him a little note too, okay? Because you know, one of these days, I'm still talk about going down and fishing with him again. Uh, yeah. And we did an interview with Frank for the Western Washington University, and uh, we did it in two parts. And uh, for some reason, the recorder wasn't working on the first half, so we still got to go back down and and do that first half with the book. Okay, so. <laughs> And you're and these interviews again. So now, are you saying just to clarify? Are you are you actually the interviewer? Are you interviewing these well, people? Well, um, no, I, 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 I've, I've I've done three, I think, with uh, with them. But no, no, no. There, there was a uh, 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 fellows that uh, Danny Beatty and uh, um, Tamara Belts and oh, I can't remember who else. Yeah. But uh, yeah, well, they they did most of them. Okay, uh, I have I've only been involved in. In, in, the, in the last few, and it's, it's people that I've known that I thought should have had uh, that history recorded. Okay, uh, like uh, uh, Haida Gwaii Rivers uh, since uh, since the the sixties, and he saw the the, the, the real heydays of, of, of that fly fishing uh, uh, up in that country there, and uh, his biggest fish that he ever caught out of that uh, yakoon was twenty nine pounds. Okay. Hmm. Uh, which is, you know, a, a good sized fish, but uh, you know, they used to go up there maybe, you know, maybe three times a a year and, and fish for for steelhead. But you know, these were sometimes just long weekend trips, and uh, you know, they get a hundred fish, you know, if, uh, and many of them are in the twenty pound range. Uh, well, I mean, I, that fishery needed to be re- recorded. Uh, and uh, so anyway, I did him. And then there's one other fellow that's 86 that uh, fished the, a lot of, of streams that uh, um, in his youth. OK, and uh, we did him. And then uh, and then Frank, we did him. So but no, I've, I've only done it uh, three or four of those interviews. Uh, but uh, yeah. 
Gotcha. So, so you've done three, and I'm interested in it because obviously we're sitting here. I'm a, I'm a podcaster, so I, I do audio interviews like we're doing here, obviously. And, yeah. you know, and in fact, I just heard an interview. I'm, I'm a podcasting addict, which is kind of I joke about that, but you know, podcasting has become this huge thing now. It's the long form interview, right? There's nothing else you can kind of find out there, there or not much, right? A lot of the stuff on the news is terrible. It's short snippets, but, but like here, yeah. we're, we're having this conversation with you that's going to be documented for a long time, right? We've got a whole catalog um, and I'm doing the same thing so I'm curious on the thing you're talking about um, because it's a skill right the audio the, the interview being an interviewer is a skill how, how like when you go into the interview how do you prepare and like how do you know what questions to ask when you do when you did those well I did uh, you know I, I know these people quite well I do a series of questions okay and I, I send it to 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 them so they they know what I'm going to ask and uh, so we go through the questions and uh, just see what they, they they respond okay and sometimes as you you're working your way through something comes up and you need to follow up on the, on that kind of thing but no I have to have a I couldn't go in there without having something scripted because <laughs> my memory's not that good anymore yeah. okay so. <laughs> That's right. That's right. No, I hear you. I hear you. It, it is. Uh, and it's funny. And I, I just talked about that. You know, Larry King, obviously, who I think just passed yeah. away uh, yeah, recently. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. I yeah. heard him on an interview. He was on the, um, oh, he's been on a bunch, but he was interviewed by Mark Marin. And, um, you know, a couple of things he talked about there was how he really loved going into an interview, you know, just on the fly. And he felt yeah. like that was one of his skills. And I, as I do mine, you know, like today, I had some questions to ask you, but I feel like the best interviews I do are the ones where I don't even look at my questions, where we just start talking and having a conversation. And it's whatever, whatever interests me, I start digging into it. You know, today I feel like it's been going pretty well because you're, you obviously have a lot of knowledge. So I don't know. I just want to throw that out there because I think it's really a passion of mine is the interview and getting better at it. And I love that you're, yeah. you've done some of yeah. those. Yeah. Well, my minds are always, always difficult because again, I'm uh... I've not I've never been a I'm very good uh, well, public speaker or anything like that. Uh -huh. so. yeah, but yeah. you know, fiction, you know, it's been such a big part of my life that I remember, you know, uh, you know, I've done. You know, I'm sitting here in a room here. It's it just covered in the wall with fish pictures and flies, and you know, my library here is right in front of me. It's all fishing stuff, okay. And wow. I got my tiny rooms right sitting right next to me. Yeah. Uh, where I'm, you know, been uh, actually started back to, uh, tying some flies because I had that, you know, arthritic wrist. I had a bone taken out of mm. it in November, and uh, you know, I had a cast for two weeks and then a splint on for another six weeks. And just going through physio right now, but I've started to tie flies again. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So you know, I, I have my little space down here that i got three rooms that are all fly fishing uh, related to the stuff okay and i spend most of my life down here if i'm not out fishing so yeah that's yeah. right do you remember a time back in your life where you know i asked this because I, i've seen this with my dad he was a big fish you know he is a big fisherman it's been his life and but i remember a time a few years back where he slowed down you know where, it, where it, like he was always the guy to go in and then it, eventually i became the one that was taking him out do, do you remember yeah, well, yeah. well again i when i hit 70 okay yeah I started to slow down a little bit and uh, um yeah uh you know it's uh, i really like fishing but yeah you know i i'm I, I just as rather you know when I'm, 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 I, I had a place I, I, I like to hike and being out there a little longer the river or even on a on a, on a lake you know uh, mm -hmm. I, uh with this covid stuff this year all our our, our we were very restricted on where we could go and what we could do they yeah. are they didn't open the, the our provincial campsites okay uh uh, until the summer, until the summertime when the school was out, because again, families did want to try and get out. But again, I couldn't go to uh, some of the places I wouldn't normally be gone. But I had a friend that has, you know, half section of, of land up in the interior there, and he has a lake on it that we've been putting fish in for, you know, forty years. So anyway, I, hmm. I could go there, okay, which I did quite a few times through April, May, and uh, June. Uh, and it's private. I didn't have to worry about, you know, contacting people with, with you know, COVID. And uh, so I, I had some good trout fishing up there. But, 
this year uh, during this you know this pandemic thing that's going on so uh, but uh, that yeah. wasn't the point i was trying to make <laughs> no no that's great hey i did want to take it really quickly to um the general practitioner um james millard who's a big uh, you know he's a friend of mine um yeah. out there and and he said he you know again he, i i told him you were coming on he said ask him about the um you know the the affection for the general practitioner. Can you talk about that fly and what that, what that's a, why you know why that's such a big uh, big fly for you? Uh, well, I guess uh, you know when I started fly fishing, uh, uh, it was um, again one of the one of the flies that uh, it, it appealed to me. Okay, and uh, my again my friend that had these Sid Glasso flies, he's the guy that brought the gps from uh great britain okay mm -hmm. probably the first ones to come into british columbia and again wow. i fished with this guy okay so <laughs> you know he was a gp uh, enthusiast but uh, uh again that's an orange fly and uh you know it, it works really really well but then i thought well for i through my reading okay i uh, i got hooked on um darker flies and well i'm gonna try tying up a a black general practitioner mm -hmm. and um you know i i did a few uh, uh few, few i put them in my box and i was over in roger a brown's river in the campbell okay and i decided to put this thing on and uh, uh and swung it through one of the runs that he talks about in his uh in his books okay and i'm actually looking at that hmm. tough line. it's hanging up on my wall right now the first fish i ever caught on a black gp and it was out of uh, Hague Browns River. So wow. uh, there's a, a strong connection. And that fly, okay, I got so enamored with it. I've, I've caught fish now out of, out of uh, close to 80 different bodies of water. Hmm. If you had to pick one fly, is that is the, is the general yeah, practitioner yeah. your go-to fly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the black one, okay. And then I did a purple one too. So uh, yeah. Those are the, the three, and I, I simplified the dressing uh, a little bit, and uh, again, but but I think the, the GPs in uh, my fly patterns, a BC book, and uh, okay, well, for simplified uh, patterns are in the con contemporary fly patterns of British Columbia, which I did with yeah, with Frank Abato, So That's right. That's right. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll link out to those as well. And um, so, in, in Hague Brown, uh, just want to dig into this. Uh, you know, again, back to him really quick. Um, you know, for, for him, obviously, he influenced a lot of people. I mean, did he, is there anything specific that you think of his name that he taught you about anything in fly fishing or or just life, I guess? Yeah, well, again, I, you know, I, I kind of look at him as a father of conservation, too, okay? Yeah. So the ethics of, of being a sportsman or fly fisherman, uh, the, 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 my, my my basis for my philosophy came out of reading his stuff. Okay, I never met him, but I, the, I had the next best thing because uh, Rod's best be, best friend was Van Egan. Okay, and, and in 1981, I met Van for the first time, and uh, we became best of friends. And uh, you know, I got to go to. Oh, these places that uh, Rod wrote about and Van uh, showed Van, okay, because Van had, uh, oh, 20 years, I guess, of, of living next to, to Hague Brown. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so uh, anyway, the next best thing was, was getting to know Van because, again, I got, got to go to these different places, the Hague Brown fish that's up in the Nimkush and... Uh, Wash River and, you know, the Campbell and the Old and all those places. So, so. Huh. is there anybody, yeah. anybody that, you know, influenced, I mean, you've written, I think, uh, maybe you could d d clarify how many books you've written, but that influenced well, your, your 20, writing? 20, 20 that are, uh, yeah. 20? 20. 20 that are. Yes. <laughs> wow. So 20. So yeah, more than I was thinking. I mean, but some of these, well, some of them I've done for the club, okay? Like the Tone of Fly Fishers, when we had 40 seasons on the D River, um, the, uh, the the president at that, at that time asked me if I'd do a talk on uh, 
club's history there. So anyway, I put together this talk, okay, from four years of pictures and stuff like that. Uh, so after after uh, I did the talk, I was looking at all this material that I, I put together, and I said, "Well, I can do. We can do, the club can do a book out on it." So again, we did a, a book called "Totem Fly Fishers: Forty Seasons on the Deep River," and then uh, I did my own book on. Uh, on, on th- thirty, my thirty-three, my thirty seasons on the Dean. I actually spent thirty-three there, but hmm. I did my little book on uh, thirty seasons on the Dean. Um, wow, yeah, yeah. No, the books. I, I, I think I was just going to say you've written, you know, twenty books, which is a, you know amazing. And 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 this came from I think uh, Gary, or, um, Jerry uh, uh, Kustich uh, in the Facebook group also mentioned he wanted to ask you about. You know, and this comes to my question: Where do you get the energy to write all these books? You know, because it's that's a lot of work. Why why do you why do you do it, and where does the energy come from? Well, again, I, I like I like the again the history of the sport, and you know these rivers that like like the Dean, the Dean, the Thompson, and the Kispiox, they're all dear to me. Okay, and there is. Uh, stuff I wanted to, to, to put down on paper and uh, it, it gives me something to do in my in my off fishing time too okay I, yeah. uh, I, uh, I'm, I don't like to just sit around and I certainly don't want to be watching television during the day and stuff nope. like that so if I'm not out there in the river doing something uh, you know putting these things together it gives me something to, something to do and uh, yeah you know if I have to tie flies for them too okay well I can do that and uh, you know, another one, like when the, the Totem Fly Fisher became 50, 50 years old, uh, the club, uh, I thought, well, we could do a book on the, on, on, on that, that club history. So I, I came up with the thing, well, maybe 50 years, 50 flies, and I asked guys to, uh, if, if they had any important fly patterns that uh, they, they, they wanted. But uh, so anyway, but it, yeah. it uh, it's a nice little bit book, but we didn't do a heck of a lot because against a club book, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, but that's one of the ones there that I, I, I count as one of my, my books because it was my idea and I put most of it together. So, yeah. uh, gotcha. um, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, I love, and I love the history as well. That's, that's part of the reason I do this podcast, trying to, you know, for people that are maybe not even fly fishing yet, you know, eventually they, they'll learn, yeah. they'll listen to this and they'll be like, oh, they might not even have known you or even maybe Roger Cake Brown, but but through this show, they might learn a little bit of the history and have a connection. So I, I appreciate your effort, um, you know, that you're able to do that. So, and then, and then your writing style, like, you know, like, did you, did you have mentors? Like, how'd you become a, a writer? Uh, well, a struggle. Let me yeah. tell you. <laughs> uh, when I did fly patterns of British Columbia, one of my uh, f- f- friends was a, uh, a, a English teacher, oh, okay. uh, and, and he he did a lot of editing and stuff like that. But no, I'm a I, you know, Haig Brown was a writer that fished. I'm a fisherman that writes, okay, and there's yeah. quite a difference yeah. in the in the style. You know, I, I'm not that. I I can look at stuff that I I, I did a long time ago. And why 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 didn't I pick that error up? Okay, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yep. and having a editors and stuff like that that help. Okay, uh, but but uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, no, it's just uh, because again, I like the 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 history of the sport, and there's some historical significance there that I struggle with uh, trying to put the words on a piece of paper, and of course. Uh, that's Being a fly cool. tire and not not you know I I, I tie reasonable flies and, uh, and yeah you know again his history historical stuff that uh, yeah. is, is just that's the reason I wanted to do this and this is the reason why uh, you know we're recording some of these like Bob Clay okay Harry Lemire and Bill McMillan they're all part of the Pacific Northwest fly fishing history and uh, to be able to do a book on on on, on those guys uh, in, in this glass of book this this this, this latest one uh, uh, you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm get, providing uh, historical pieces okay for uh, the the fly fishing community so yeah no no it's it's awesome and we haven't even touched on flies obviously i've been very interested just in your background and 
you know, I had I had John Gearock on a, a, quite a while ago, and we talked about a lot of his writing and his style. And I think I, mean, I think some people wanted to hear more about fishing, right? And that's again today yeah. we're, kind of, we're kind of this thing where we haven't talked a lot about fishing because for me, just you as you know as a writer is pretty interesting, right? The the, the effort you've put your life into doing this is um, you know that's substantial. I feel like myself, right? This podcast again, I, I'm trying to make the comparison, but it it's a lot of work to produce. Oh all, yeah. You know what I mean? But I do it yeah. because I love, the, I think the same similar things. Yeah. I love yeah. the history. I love fishing. I love, yeah. so when you're out there on the water, so you're out there fishing, say for steelhead, are you always thinking about the, the book and like ideas or how's that, how's that look? The next book? Oh no, no, no. Again, when I'm out there on the water, I'm usually uh, concentrating on what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I'm making sure that the fly comes across properly and stuff like that. But uh, it's probably, you know, like, if I'm, 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 I'm going to ski in a country, I'm, I've got almost two days to drive there, okay? Oh, right. <laughs> because there's a lot of thinking tied that you can, okay? Because I, I, I make a lot of these trips by myself, okay? And I'll see people up there and stuff like that. But uh, I don't uh, I, I don't have often have somebody sitting there next to me. My wife doesn't uh, doesn't fish, so... Yep. Uh, uh, you know, I got a, I got a bunch of thinking uh, that I can do, okay. And if I'm, uh, like, if I need to do any research, like Bob Clay book, okay. Well, I'm going up to Bob Clay's on uh, in the Gisbyox there, uh, and I interview him. And uh, then if I need to have pictures, okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to take them when I'm I do this these trips and so yeah, yeah no, I yeah. Yep. Your focus, your focus. That's cool. Yeah. Well, now you've got a new thing. If I can get you on on the podcast, you can listen to some of our back catalog of our. <laughs> we've had yeah. a lot of. I haven't had. Uh, you know, there's a couple of people you mentioned I haven't had on. Uh, I've actually had John McMillan on, uh, Bill's son. Um, oh yeah. And, and we talked about. In fact, I'll, I'll give a. I just uh, kind of uh, talked to just John briefly yesterday. I was kind of bummed because he he started a podcast last year. And uh, and he kind of pod faded, and the he he isn't doing it anymore. And I reached out to John, and I said, "Hey, what's the deal, John? Are you no, are you done with podcasts?" And he's like, "Yep." He was like, "Too too much work. I got to focus on other things." So it just you know, again, I was bummed because I love the podcasting. But for you, if you ever want to get into it, let me know. I'll, I'll show you how to yeah. uh, show you how to listen and do the whole thing. But um, yeah. Cool. Well, um, I did want to touch on flies before we get out of here. We're going to get out of here pretty quick, but you know, you've got all these books, obviously a big focus is on flies. So I do this little section called the 222, which is just top two tips, top two flies, top two resources. And maybe we can just bring it out with, with that and talk about flies. So you mentioned one, um, we talked about the one fly, the general practitioner. Is there another fly or maybe fly patterns that you are your go-to patterns? Yeah, I, I have a book called My Steel It Flies. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's a dozen or so in there that uh, oh, cool. I've used over over the years that uh, are, 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 have been good for good for me. Uh, that's a book that's published. Uh, well, again, I, it, it, it's it's one of these ones I did. I got a few copies left of it. Uh, okay, but uh, yeah, um, gotcha. Uh, you know, the Doc Spratley and he was a really good, uh, and I've got fond memories of it because, again, I got that first deal in on, on, the, uh, on, the, on the Thompson uh, w- w- with it. But it, it's very good trout fly, too, okay, uh, uh, in lakes. And uh, I'll carry special fly is another one that I have a memory for. It, again, a good trout fly. Like, well, there's probably people who use it for steel that I have. But, yep. uh but you know they play fly like the Adams is a dry fly. It's really really good for trout and uh, uh, good grayling fly. Um, I have another fly I call a little little bugger because it's I tie it on size 14s, but it's kind of it's like a little of a, a, a cross between uh, Roderick Higgs brown uh, black caterpillar and. Uh, and and the woolly bugger, okay, uh, yep. combination of the two flies that uh, I've uh, and it's a really good uh, crow fly, okay, mm-hmm. in uh, in lakes and in in in, in, in rivers. So hmm. uh, that's another favorite uh, fly. Uh, um, I have a, again, I think called woolly bear, woolly woolly, woolly bear bomber, okay, cause it's mm-hmm. a, a black. Uh, deer hair spun thing with a brown hackle and black tail uh, but that's the one i i use for uh, 
uh, skating the fly or waking the fly across uh, for summer on steelhead. And, you know, I've caught fish and I don't know, 15 poverty rivers using that fly. It's been, it's my go-to fly for, for that type of fishing. Uh, so. You got a bunch, and obviously you've got we've got the books that we'll be able to check out with all your fly patterns. Yeah. So you've so you've covered a little bit of of uh, a little bit of everything. So not just steelhead. You've covered flies for all types of uh, the species. A lot of the species. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. all right. So so we cover that, and then let, let's just take it to steelhead because I love these these tips thing. You know, we haven't talked anything about fishing today, really. But if you're on the river, so let's just take us to a river. You're up on the Kispiox, let's say. Um, well, I, I was thinking it's Kispiox, but what about, you know, the Dean, some of these other rivers, a lot of people probably haven't fished yet, but what, you know, what would you give them a, like a tip for steelhead fishing? If you're out there trying to swing up a fish, do you, do you have a tip you might provide for somebody that's listening here to help them get into a fish? Uh, you have to look at the river and, and look at the flow and the, the, the way the, 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 the structure is okay. Cause you know, I, I've been with, with guys on the, on, on the deep river. They, they've come all the way, all the way up there and they, 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 they cast too, too straight across. Okay. There's yeah. more certain distance, but you got to look at the thing. Okay. Mostly it's, you know, it's a 45 down and sometimes it's even less than that, but that you got to concentrate on where you're putting your fly to bring it across that, that, section of water where you think fish are going to be so it's going at the right speed and uh, not racing across in a big bend if mm-hmm. you've uh, you know if you yep. so uh, yeah that's um, a great tip. again it's re- reading reading the water correctly that's a great tip no i think a lot of people do get stuck in that that are new they just they're like yep just swing it and they're not really thinking about how that fly is yeah. moving moving in the water yeah um yeah and uh, yeah, so do, do you have maybe one more? It could be any anything that comes to mind, just as far as so. So let's say we're in the water, we're swinging. Now, now I've got say a little bucket. I know where I think a fish is going to be. I'm swinging that fly down over that fish. How how would how else would we make sure to maybe get that fish to come up? Yeah, well, again, sometimes they do come up. Okay, and uh, one thing I've I've I'm, I'm I'm impatient when I'm on 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 a, a river, yep. especially if I'm drifting. Okay, if I can, my water master, I'm going to cover a lot. I'll spend. I, I like this woolly bear bomber because what it, it's coming across, and if fish comes up at it, sometimes they'll come up at it a number of times for that. that but you know, I I don't want to spend a lot of time because I got still got a long ways to go. But uh, changing down, okay, sometimes if you have a, a size four on and, and the fish are, are rise to a, a couple of times and they don't actually take it, if yeah. you, you go down a size to a six or an eight, uh, you know, often I get it on the next cast. There you go. I've, I've given them, uh, so, you know, yep. I, 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 you know, yeah, it's, um, but you know, some lot, 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 lot of guys that say, "Oh well, I caught a fish on a size four fly in this river," uh, you know, and I'm I'm going to use a size four. Yeah. Well, you know. Uh, so anyway. that's great. That's an awesome one. Yeah, yeah. Or that's a that's a, that's another killer tip. I think again, people get stuck in the routine, but yeah, you've got to, you should be changing changing it up. And I think the the BC. I always think of the BC as big flies as well. You know, I always think like you know, big flies, big fish. I've caught a lot of oh, well, not yeah. a lot, but I've caught a number of fish in BC up on the Skeena fishing big flies, the biggest flies I've ever fished in my life. Yeah. Bob Clay, you know, uh, he's, he's, he's been, you know, he, it was in the seventies when he came, but you know, he, he, you know, he, you know, he's, he told me a number of times and, you know, I, I agree, but he says, use the smallest fly that you can possibly get away with. And yeah. that's, that's his philosophy. That's buddy. amazing. Okay. So, that's amazing. <laughs> so sometimes he's down to, you know, size eight quite often. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, that's amazing. That's but, a, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but it's hard. You know, people are like, oh, that's a big fish. Okay, I need a big no. fly. And a lot of times you need a big fly, uh, especially if you're, you know, you're searching. You're, that's what that black general practitioner was good for me, too, because, again, it was a really good search fly. And I could carry on. I knew I was going to. There's a fish down uh, there. I have a good chance of having a response from it. Uh, when I was fishing the sunk line, okay, uh, 
because again, I didn't have to worry too much about changing uh, yeah. changing the fly because it was effective and uh, had a lot of confidence in it. So that's amazing. Yeah, those are awesome. Yeah. All right, all right, hey, uh, before we get out of here, just one quick one. I want to get on that resource. So you've you've you got a huge resource. You got all these books. We talked a lot of, a lot of stuff. Is there anything else that's not your own that somebody can learn a little bit about? Maybe kind of British Columbia, you know, just fishing in general or steelhead. That, are there any other books, magazines, videos, re- anything you could think of? No, no, I can't think of, uh, uh, you know, yeah. the steel, uh, you know, Phil Raleigh's wrote, wrote oh, yeah. a book on, uh, yep. on still water fishing. Brian Chan's had yep. a, a couple of out, uh, for, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those are the only two people I, I can think and of. And those right are now. the best. Those are the best. I, yeah. I think that, yeah. um, yeah. I had Phil on, uh, a Phil on a while back and he was, uh, was huge. Obviously he knows his stuff. And, you know, today yeah. we're going to leave this one off without talking about still waters. And, you know, I, I'm, you know, if we, we have a certain length of time, we got to cut it off. So I'm going to let you get out of here, yeah. Art. But, um, Hey, um, yeah. before I do, I just wanted to uh, check in the next, uh, you know, six months or so. Do you have any other books that we can expect you got come anything that the general public we could check out coming up here? Yeah, uh, well, again, the same class of book right now. Yeah. And I've, I've got another idea. I'm not going to. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm thinking about, but again, it's it's uh, uh, a lot of fly time to, to do it. Okay. Oh, cool. So, but uh, yeah, yeah, but I, awesome. I'll, I'll see you again. It's just uh, you know, yeah. I I be thinking what I'm going to be doing for you know later this year. So. so we can expect, so, so we're, we can expect there's potentially another book coming out of you. Yeah. Maybe in the yeah, future. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. All right. Or, okay. Hey, well, um, if they want to find you, I guess just, uh, uh art, uh, lingering on Facebook, right. Is the best place. Yes. That's, uh, yeah. This will be great, man. Hey, Art, I appreciate you coming on and sharing today. Uh, this has been really great. Um, and, you know, if anybody has questions, I can, they can connect with me and all. And, you know, um, and we can connect them to the books you've written and stuff. So, um, yeah, I just want to thank you for all your time today and, and hope to keep in touch with you. Okay, Dave. Yeah, it's gone quickly. So, thanks. <laughs> So there you go. If you want to find all the show notes, all the links we covered, just go to wetflyswing.com slash 191. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash resources to find out the most recent book recommendation from uh, some of the guests we've had on this podcast. If you collect, uh, if you can, <laughs> if you click over there and connect uh, and buy something through any of those links, uh, this podcast will get, get a small commission want to say thank you in advance if you have a chance to do that. That's at no additional uh, charge to you. And before we get out of here, just want to share a quick summary of uh, the seven the seven books Art has out there. And he's got, I think, another 13 more that, um, you know, or some that aren't published and things like that. But here's the top. They're the big seven. So I have uh, Irresistible Waters. That was the first one. Uh, number two, Thompson River Journal. Number three, West Coast Steelheader. Number four, Famous British Columbia Fly Fishing Waters. Number five, Dean River Journal. Number six, The Contemporary Fly Patterns. This is uh, Contemporary Fly Patterns of British Columbia. And number seven, Kispiox River Journal. So I think I will put the Famous British Columbia uh, Fly Waters, Fly Fishing Waters, in the uh, resources page. So you can take a look over there and um, uh, take a look at that one if you want and see what else we have going. So... um, just want to thank you again for uh, checking out the show today. I uh, definitely appreciate your support and hope to maybe catch you on the river or online. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com.